Right, it's 7-Eleven. All right. Check, check. Can I get the check? <laughs> Ready? All right. Here we go. Tonight we are going to talk about something that a lot of people think is just a saying, but it's actually a Bible verse. And in most of your Bibles, it is written in red ink. That means, what does that mean? Jesus said it. So you know if Jesus said it, who has been in existence since the beginning, that it's a good saying. Not that it's just a saying, but it is something that we should do. It is better to give than to receive. Now, do you believe that? You know, it seems to take on a different meaning, though, when you ain't got much to give. Because then when, you, when you're really broke or poor or, or without, um, it, is it really better to give than to receive? Because then you're, then you're broker than you were to start with. More broker. Broker is a word because that's what the stock people are. So it's a real word, broker. So anyway, in the book of Acts, <clears throat> chapter 20 is where we will be at. And I'm going to start in verse number 32. It's kind of continuation of what we were talking about this morning. Paul is telling the Ephesian elders goodbye. He said, I'm never going to see you again. So he says this. He says, now I commit you to God and to the word of His grace, which can build you up and give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. I have not coveted anyone's silver or gold or clothing. You yourselves know that these hands of mine have supplied my own needs and the needs of my companion. In everything I did, I showed you that by this kind of hard work, we must help the weak. Remembering the words of the Lord Jesus Himself, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Now, Paul's got a lesson for the, for the folks here, for the church here, and even the church here today. Is it better to give than to receive? Oh, yep. You can't fall if you're on the bottom, right? So let's get on down here. Now, what are some things that are easy to give? Chat them out. <laughs> Stuff you don't want. <clears throat> And money and time. Um, what else was it? Food. Love. These are all things that are easy to give, yeah? Well, what is hard to give? Time. Yeah, sometimes love. Money. So it can be the same answer. You know, when I think about what is hard to give, forgiveness comes to mind. Because it's hard to forgive some folk. Especially when they don't think they've done nothing wrong and they ain't asked for forgiveness. You'd be like, why I gotta forgive you? Just because the Bible says so? Yeah. That's a good enough reason, ain't it? Listen, there are some things in our life that are gonna be hard to do, some things are gonna be easy to do. But when it comes to giving, we have been shown the perfect example about how to give with what spirit to give, and it was what Jesus did on the cross. You know, in John 3.16, it says that God so loved the world, He gave. You know, when He gave His Son, He was allowing Jesus Christ to come down here and give His life as a ransom for many, to die on the cross for our sins, to pay a price that we should have paid. He paid it for you, all right? Now, Cassie, that's cool, right? He paid it for you. Now, all He wants you to do is accept it. And once you accept salvation, you get saved. The Holy Spirit comes and lives inside of you. And He brings with Him not only a spiritual gift somewhat, but it is, a, it is, it is the Spirit of God. It's the Spirit of giving. The Spirit of forgiveness. The Spirit of loving. Um, whatever you can do, whatever you can give, then that's a sacrifice. This morning, as we discussed, Paul said, to be in the will of God, 
You must be a living sacrifice, which means you give what you have. If you have time, you give time. If you have money, you give money. All right? If you have something that you don't need anymore, then that should be very easy to give. Nobody might want it, but, you know. I rolled up right there at uh, St. Vincent's at the red light one day, and this guy come up. He had a little sign that said, uh, um, need money for food. And so I tried to hand him a burrito from Taco Bell. He said, mm, I don't want that. Wait, I tried to give him what I had, but he didn't want it. So I ate that burrito. And then uh, those people on the elevator ride with me, they knew it. Anyway. In this instance, it would have been more more better to give than to receive. Those people on the elevator knew that. I guess so. Too much information, I guess. Oh, have y'all noticed that, uh, speaking of elevators, that one up there at Grandview is weird. It was like, third floor. I mean, I felt kind of violated every time we got to the right floor. Like, lobby. Is this elevator hitting on me? That's what I was thinking every time. I was like, okay. So, so what have we learned here? Stairs. Stairs. They're good for your heart. Um, <laughs> anyway. Paul was explaining to these these guys. This is this is what he was saying to them. He said, first of all, he said in verse 32, I'm committing you to God. I want you to live for God, all right? Everything that you have, I want you to give it to God. So I'm going to leave you in God's hands because God is going to take care of you. And this is how, what I want you to understand. You can God can build you up. And He can give you an inheritance among all of those who are sanctified. So, you know, we were talking about this while I go in class, Mark, about how God gives us things. And God gives you that stuff to use, not to waste or not to hoard up, but He gives you things, uh, the gifts of God, for you to use and for you to share with other people. If God gave you a, a good singing voice, that is not to be wasted, it's to be used. And it's to be, you know, you sing for the praises of God, not for the praises of yourself. So it's better to give than, than to receive those praises on yourself. You, you're able to glorify God because God's given you the courage to do it, the ability to do it, the talent, things like that. Um, there are some times that people, they, they just need a friend. They need, it, they need a, a, a shoulder to cry on or an ear to listen or something like that. And if you're able to give that time, that is so... So rewarding to those people, you know, because you're giving it. And Paul was telling them, it's like, you will receive an inheritance that it's going to make you rich even in the middle of all these other saved folks. If you are committed to God, what God wants to give you, huh, you can't outgive God. You can give people um, all of the things that we listed. You can, you can give God by doing that for other people. And God's just going to keep pouring more into you. He's going to keep doing more through you. The more that you do for the Lord, y'all, it, it, it is absolutely um, on par with one another. And, and God will keep on heaping opportunities and blessings on you. And like we sang, there should be showers of blessing because God is going to rain down all of these different things on you because he knows he can trust you with them. Paul tells these folks, like, you know, I didn't do this to get rich. I'm in this ministry and I didn't ask y'all for anything. I made my own way. My my companions, we've all paid paid our own way. Now the church did support Paul and he appreciated that, but he wouldn't like you know, making a, a, a big living off of them, you know. He was like, you know that uh, these hands of mine have supplied my own needs. And 
He was able to take care of himself. So everything that Paul was giving, you know, it was because it was something that he owned. You know, he had worked as a as a tent maker. That was a skill that he knew. And that's why he clicked with uh, Aquila and Priscilla. They were tent makers also. And they were able to, to make tents. And wherever Paul was... Uh, was at for a while. He was probably making some tents and selling them. Um, you know, he was here in Ephesus for several weeks. Um, you know, so he probably churned out a few tents or showed somebody how to make them because that was like, y'all, that was a mobile home back then. You know, people needed tents because as they traveled around, that's what they stayed in. And as we get closer to the return of the Lord, more and more people are going back to staying in tents. Right? I mean, there's a whole bunch of campy, campy people. Anyhow, they're, they're campers, Max. But Paul says, in everything I did, I showed you that by this kind of hard work, we must help the weak. Now, who is the weak? If we're going to help them, we've got to know who they are, right? So, who is the weak? Shout it out. <laughs> Sinners, absolutely, they're weak in the Lord. Yeah. The Bible speaks about we must help the widows and orphans. Those that are sick. Yeah. I mean, I mean, y'all, unless Superman is in your life, it's pretty much everybody. You know. And we are all gonna have moments of weakness and moments that that, you know, we need somebody to come alongside of us and to help us out, to encourage us, um, to give us those words of the Lord, the words of wisdom, the things like that. If you've got kids, the kids are going to need to be built up and they're going to need you to tell them everything's going to be all right, um, even if you don't believe it sometimes. I'm not condoning lying, but these kids need to see your faith that it's going to be all right. And they need to hear that every now and then. Your spouse needs to hear that. Um, there's, there's a lot of uh, for instances here. But what Paul was telling them was that in everything I did, with the way that I worked, with hard work, the way that we did not accept an easy road, but I just Paul just told them, I know that every town I go to, everything that I'm about to do is going to be marked with trial, tribulation. There's, there are going to be people hunting me down and trying to kill me. And he had already been stoned. They had taken him out to beat him and to whip him, and his life had already been tracked down by so many people. He'd have been had to shuttled out of a building in a basket and, and hid and everything else. Couldn't go to preach in the synagogue because if he went to church, he would be killed. He knew that that's what his life was going to be, and yet he kept going because it's better to give his life instead of sitting back saying, let me preserve my life. He gave, and he gave, and he gave, and he showed these people it's better to give than to receive. Now, helping the weak, there's going to be moments in our lives when we ourselves are the weak. The best lessons you've ever learned are ones that hurt, right? Those are the things that seem to stick with you those difficult things, those hard things, the things that you don't take for granted, all right? Those are the type of things that have a way of, of burning into that gray matter that you call a brain. And you will remember those things because they had association with several different feelings, all right? Um, that's why so many people are, they have memories associated with things that they smell. You might smell something that brings back a memory of, of a hard time or a bad time, um, you may you may hear a sound that reminds you of something that that really broke your heart. And all of these different times, you're going to have weakness. And since you know what the weakness feels like, then you should know how to serve. You should know how to give, right? Some of the best givers. Let's let's take money for instance, because normally when people think about it, it's better to give than receive. They think about money, mili uh, not military. Uh, what am I trying to say? Material, not military things. <laughs> yeah, tanks and guns, you know. 
um, the material things. So when, when you have been broke and you needed somebody's help and you received help, it, it destroyed your pride to have to ask for it and to receive it. Okay, But when you received help in that kind of way, it helped you to see the importance of helping somebody and, and that being a thing. Benevolence is, is a great ministry that the church and Christians can have. By helping somebody that is weak in that type of way, um, it can change a person's life. It can change their future. It could change everything because it helps people to see the love of God. And y'all, we talked about it this morning. I mean, there's, there's uh, sometimes that when you are helping the weak, the weak just seem to become, I don't know, expectant of that. And it can turn from, from charity to welfare in just a matter of moments. And the recipient of your giving, they answer to God. Okay? Just like you answer to God. And so often when we are giving to some people, then we got to trust God that what we're giving is in good faith. All right? We must also guard ourselves against, uh, against shady individuals that would take advantage of us. Because if you are just willy-nilly um, just giving away what God has blessed you with, that's not being a good steward either. Okay, So you have to recognize, and the Holy Spirit will let you recognize, but you are to give without judgment, just trusting that God has put you in this position to help. So how can I help? And then give. Because it's better to give than to receive. What if God waited till we loved Him before He loved us? Have you ever thought of that? I mean, if He waited, like, you know, I'm going to make a way they could be forgiven of their sins, but I'm going to wait and see if they love me first. But the Bible don't teach that. The Bible teaches that while we were dead in our trespasses, while we were yet sinners, Christ showed us how much He loved us. He died for us. He gave while we didn't deserve it. He gave first. And what does He want in return? Not for us to give Him anything, but just to believe in it. Trust Him. Give Him our affection. Sometimes... We as people, we seem to want to wait. We seem to want to wait on other people first. I'm going to tell you a true story, and then we will, we will be done. Married people, listen to me. Maybe this will help you. It is better to give than to receive. Okay? Me and my wife, we have a competition going about who can who can be the uh, the achiest some days, all right. And some days she is achier than I am, and some days I'm achier than her. Now, on on the days that that I am down in my back, she will give more, all right. Like yesterday, um, my back went out because I was walking. That's all. I just walked across the kitchen floor and got a catch in my back and I was just shut down. And she took care of me all day long. Then there's other days that she don't feel good and I'll help take care of her. But there have been moments in our life when we both felt bad or we both felt good and neither one of us was willing to jump up and serve first. Y'all know what I'm talking about. When everything is fine, who's going to sacrifice? Is there a need for sacrifice? No, there's not a need. Because if we're both doing fine, then we can do it ourselves. We can take care of it ourselves. At my house, you don't get up to go to the bathroom to you just about, I'm talking about you about to burst. Because you know as soon as you get up, everybody in earshot is going to be like, why are you up? 
You finna have a to-do list, a chore list, and everything else. Does that sound about right? That sound about right. Okay. What would... Now, let me tell y'all this. There are some days, that, and, and they are more often than not, where we are trying to serve one another first instead of waiting on the other one to do something first. If you start sitting around waiting on somebody to serve you before you serve them, you might be partnered up with a hard head and nothing ever gets done. There ain't never no love, no affection. There ain't ever any uh, any getting the water out of the fridge. There ain't never any help. It's just clothes is piling up. Who knows? All right, your house is in disarray. But if we are serving one another first, let me tell you what happens. If she does something for me, she she goes out of her way in service for me, that makes me want to serve her. And then I will go out of my way to serve her, and then that will make her feel feel better, more loved, and that will increase our relationship and make her want to do more for me pretty soon. It's it's just it's a, it's a it's a great atmosphere to live in. Or you cannot do anything and want nothing ever happen. That's logic. You hear that? I'm tell you what, folks at Harvard ain't that smart. If you don't do anything, won't nothing happen. That's why Jesus said it is better to give than to receive. It's better to do than waiting for it to be done. Are you a giver or a getter? If you are more focused on being a getter, you might not ever get what you think you deserve. You might not ever get what you want. But if you are more focused on giving, your life is going to be better. Your relationships are going to be better. Your friendships, your church relationships, and y'all more importantly than anything, your relationship with God is going to mirror who God is. He didn't wait for to see what He could get. He gave first. And as a result of what He gave on the cross, I think He got a... Uh, I think he got a bigger family. People didn't have to travel to to the synagogue once a year, sacrifice an animal and things like that in order to repent of their sin. That day of atonement. Now, Jesus freely gave. What are you going to give him back? Better to give than get. So, what are you going to have the courage to give? This week, somebody is going to need something from you. It's probably not going to be a cup of sugar. It's probably going to be something that you don't feel like giving, or something that's going to, going to inconvenience you. What will you give? If you will do it, it's going to bring you closer to God. So let's pray tonight for courage. Let's pray for strength. Let's pray that God will help us to see what it is that we need to give. Exactly when we need to give it. And y'all pray that God will just give us the unction to do it and not put it off or not make an excuse. Alright? So if you need to pray specifically for something right now. Let's all stand and uh, we sing this hymn. Um, take this time to pray.